these two are significantly better opportunities than trying to sit and wait for any little chalky flippy. So the best trade, if you actually were trading this, where it's actually setting up right now is to have a short setup right here. And we can protect just over the high and we can protect um, a little bit more to account for some of the absorption that can happen of the zone, just like that. And that's it. And that's what we're waiting for. Okay. I will move this stop loss to break even at the, just like that. So now you'd be securing um, currently at least 55,000. If it continues, you'd be securing 119,000. Quick disclaimer, uh, these videos are meant for educational purposes only. Anything said or shown in any of these videos are personal opinion and my perspective. A trading carries a high level of risk, so anything done is your responsibility. Due to the nature of the market, which is ex extremely bearish already, at least on the weekly, and this being one shift to the top side, this could likely be a redistribution. Therefore, this high could be acting as a UTAD that will actually result in price coming to take this low out because there hasn't been it hasn't been proven to us yet that big money has begun to accumulate positions. All that's been proven is that price has broken once, basically, and now price can start accumulating positions or can continue the distribution leg of what's going on. But so I'm instantly when I look at this, even though we're in this bullish range, my instant thought process is we're still extremely bearish on this because the bullish hasn't come in yet. OK, so now we're going to go and try to basically prove the point as a scientist. We're going to prove the hypothesis that this is remaining bearish by looking at a lower time frame and allowing it to function as a um, stepping stone in deciding whether or not it's worthy to keep trading this market. So let's go to a daily here. So on the daily, what we can see once again, from a perspective of left to right, because it's really important that we, we think about this from a left to right perspective is we have also a range that's bullish that we're in, right? We're in the range from, um, we're in this low right here to this high. It's pretty much the same thing. So we have a bullish range here. So there's not really much to do with it, right? It's just in this big range. It's in the middle. Yes, there's intermediary breaks that are occurring. That's why this price is likely to see some low um, sweepage right now because of the intermediary ranges being short. But at the moment, there's no clear prerogative as to why I would want to trade this or not. So we're going to step down further. We're going to step down to a four hour and ask ourselves, what is the market doing at this current time? Again, left to right. I'm going to do this a little quicker, but you have a low, you have a high. Price breaks that low, right? Creating a breakdown, pulls back. Look where it doesn't where, look where it pulls back to. In this case, it doesn't pull back to the deepest zone. It actually pulls back to the perfect. Um, sorry about that, guys. It actually pulls back to the perfect unmitigated portion of that move, right? Which is right here. It just taps into it perfectly. Uh, actually, I think it might have been already mitigated. It looks like it might have already been mitigated. So actually, we're going to ignore this. But nonetheless. Price pulls back without coming into the deep areas of the zone. Again, what's happening in these areas here? Dumb money, retail, uh, order flow based people, people with the um, with the little volume profiles, right? Because the volume profile is going to show a point of control here. So everyone wants to long it, right? Just to prove it to you. I don't even know if this is the case, but every time we do this, I'm always correct somehow because I understand where volume usually exists, right? If you take a look at this from like here to here at the time where they'd be watching this market, right? Let's see. I'm telling you, the volume profile is likely to be around here. Okay, let's see. Okay, so you have a big point of control here and you have a big point of control here. So once again, you have the same thing existing. You have people that want to long back up into the big volume profile areas or you want to see or they want to see this spring hold or this spring hold or they want to see the pullback into a deeper area or they want to see the liquidation of the trend line, whatever it might be. There's a force on on their ends to again see the counter the counter action movement rather than the at hand movement. So let's just continue analyzing it the correct way instead. So then we get once again, another breakdown. Okay. So now we've broken down multiple times and we've shown that there is bearish orders coming in, but let's continue, right? Then we break down again. We have a low and this high we break up. And what's interesting is this right here is the model that we're assuming is occurring on the weekly right now. Notice oh, we're on a three hour chart. That's fine. It doesn't matter what chart we're on because time is not really necessary. It's the move that matters, right? We see orders using time. We don't use the time frames. Time frames are not really, um, they don't have anything special to them. We just use them to see what orders look like. But notice this, this um, as I call it in the private membership, it's a, it's a trade plan. This is its own model. This is called the redistribution model. What's happening is you have a very bearish market that's already established. You get a bullish break that then look what happens, re-breaks bearish. Take a look at what's occurring on the weekly, guys. Again, always ask yourself what's going on. A bearish market that's that's already established, 
a bullish break, what do you expect from this based on that simple model from just from that just model alone? Do you expect that this high is going to get taken out or do you expect that this low and potentially this low once it get taken out? The expectation is more so on this downside. Why? Because the redistribution model is taking place. A story has been assigned to the given market. Money has been assigned to that given market. And that money is now moving that market in that in that given way until it wants to show otherwise. And just like we just saw the three hours acting in this way or is he acted in this way? We're already expecting the weekly to do that. And how do I have this 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 keen sense, this this third eye of knowing what this market wants to do? Well, because I've done the same thing over and over and over again for years after years after years, teaching to thousands of people year after year after year, looking at the same kind of market, not not the same, but different markets with the same approach every single year to the point where I know what I want to look for and what context will provide the best opportunities, right? Let's go to the daily here. Let's go back to the three hours. So this is the same thing happening here. You have a bearish market already established. The bearish market shifted bullish, but the expectation is to remain bearish and then it reclaims its bearish push, right? So here you have the reclaim of the bearish push. You have a high to the low. And once again, we, in this case, we did reach back up into the S&D zone, and this is a phenomenal area for the three box sell setup, right? Box one, box two, box three for a setup, and that's what you want to take short to the lows that we just spoke about on the daily and the, and the four hour, I believe, that would act as the intermediary lows due to the fact that we're in a weekly bearish context. We're in a daily intermediary bearish context, and now we're on the hourly redistribution model context. Slowly, you're seeing how everything comes together. Um, so the expectation would be to take out this low, and that's exactly what price is doing. So what I should be doing this week, if I wanna, if I wanna still trade this and show up to trade, right, any given day, I wanna be looking for reasons to short this market because again, we exist from this high to this low currently, right? We are currently mitigating and moving from it. The only expectation in our mind should be to clear the next low. And notice once again that I didn't have to that I didn't have to go and find the equal lows to determine this is the low that wants to get taken out. I followed the structural ranges, the three box system. Started with the first box, which is the S, the structure. Figured out where I am from a contextual approach across timeframes, put them together and said, is there a reasoning to go short here? And yeah, of course there is, because we have tons of space to move for that as well. And that space is actually to an area that's within an already bearish market. So when price gets here, I wouldn't be even using this area to go long. I'd be using it to wait for the mitigations that would allow dumb money to get back into place that would allow me to get short on them. And as dumb money is sitting here going, why is my price getting taken out? Why is it always going against me? Our team is sitting there positioned on the new lower time frame potential three box systems that set themselves up here based on once again, the basic redistribution model rooted in the same things I've taught you week after week after week, where what people think is a spring or what people think is an accumulation takes one impulse after to make it a redistribution. And now everyone's sitting there going, oh, Wyckoff is such a fucking, what's it called? Wyckoff is a hindsight tool. Of course, it looks like a spring. And then of course it's a UTAD. But by the time I knew it was a UTAD because price is down here, I'm too late. But that's because you're not thinking about it. Think about it. Sit with yourself for a few days, for a few weeks, doing the same thing on repeat. And you're going to learn so much for yourself. And watch my videos. They're going to help you as well. And join up with the course because the course is great. People love it. <laughs> um, so we already have a bearish bias established on the higher time frame on the weekly, showing us that there's bearish pushes. We have a daily established. The weekly, if even though it's in a bullish range at the moment, has a zone that's really far that we don't even expect to hold to start with. So there's easy money that can come into this. So we have clear and easy areas to work with to the downside as it sets up and provides these moves for us. So all we have to do now is focus on ways to get position short. Now, some of you are already position short on this on this area here, or we can now further drop down and look for reasons to go short. Now, as we go to the 15 minute, you can see once again, we have the same thing happen. You guys are, this is actually a model I teach in the private mentorship. It's called the redistribution model where you have a bearish market established right now. Here it is, right? And it's already made multiple bearish breaks. One of the things you can do is you can wait for price to come and break a high and then start looking to get position short. Why? 
because it's following the redistribution model. The exact same thing that we're using to basically understand where we are on the weekly and the likelihood of the weekly. The same thing we're using to understand where we are on that three hour chart and, and what is likely to happen. The same thing we're using now to potentially get position on the 15 minute. If we didn't want to do that, what's another way to get position during the week on a lower time frame? Well, let's take a look. I wouldn't want to trade any of these zones personally for the reasons of multiple MBs to the downside. In this case, we have three or four MBs. This is the rule of three or four MBs or multiple MBs in one direction that aren't clusters. This is a private mentorship concept, but if any of you can work it out, by all means, go for it. Again, why do I keep it private? One, because it has a lot of nuance. It has a lot of depth. And I mean, I also sell my mentorship. So I'm going to be taking the concepts that I'm going to be taking the concepts that are very simplified out here. And then I'm going to be teaching the extreme depth versions and giving you the exact tools you need to utilize them in the private. That's why the private exists. Okay. So check out the website if you want to, if you want to join up with that. So this is an area that I would not look to short ever right now. Many mentorships once again are sitting there going, Oh, 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 Oh. And yeah, I mean, you can do that. And one of these is likely to get hit, but if you're trying to execute that way, there's a very, very small likelihood that you're going to find profitability because once again, you're trading everything. You might as well leave your chart blank and just say, I'm going to trade in any of the white space at any given time. Here I go. Change of character. Down candle. 50%. Here I go. Right. And yeah. This can work, maybe, maybe not. You can make an Instagram for it after it does work, potentially, but the likelihood is that it's not gonna work. And you're going to learn that over time. And it's better that you start learning the way that price moves now, rather than going through months or potentially years of not learning anything. Because most people that end up quitting actually quit in the first year of learning. Uh, I think the, 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 the number is 40% of people that quit in the markets have only traded for a month. It's kind of a crazy number crazy number um so really really think about that right like when you hear 80 percent, 90 percent of people losing the markets really think what that number means um and instead of being scared about it realize why it exists and then as you learn to look at the markets you're going to very quickly start to see why most people get frustrated get stuck get confused and stay stuck right so what would i be doing this week on this on this on this market i'd be either waiting for that to occur where we have a redistribution model just like we just saw in the three hour and the weekly as it's presenting right now or if you're trying to trade during the day well you'd step yourself down and you'd start watching for potential trades to see if there's something worthwhile we know that this market is already bearish it wants to head to this low this low is that liquidity point that price wants to head towards and then long term it may want to head down to this area here and then even longer term it wants to take out continuation lows because those are that's the prerogative of this overall market currently it's showing us bearishness so there's a pretty good context to it now this is this looks a little back and forth but that's fine we can still trade it um you know so if you are someone that's trying to do lower time frame you know you could you could scale down and do the same thing but if you're just a higher time frame based trader well you'd be waiting for a redistribution model or a cleaner setup that's all you're looking for right your main setup is just going to be off that three box and you're just going to wait for it to occur now simple as that Otherwise, you can scale down and start looking for lower time frame based approaches to this, right? So for instance, if you got on today, you shouldn't be focused on longs, right? A lot of people, once again, guys, let's go through it really quickly. This happens, they want to go long, okay? Every break short, great. It rebreaks long, a rebreaks long. They want to go long, 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 they want to go long. Now, what you have, once again, is a lot of money regardless of if it's retail or smart money, whatever the fuck you want to call it, um, either looking at the support and resistance of any zone here, trying to catch any given low just like this, or people looking to trade into the channel or into the trend line, into the trend line, whatever it might be. Regardless of whether you're a retail support resistance trader or a smart money supply and demand trader, whatever, whatever you want to call yourself, the people that are sitting here looking to catch this market as it comes down at this point and then this point and then this point and then this point are the ones that are losing money um, and this goes hand in hand with either drawing zones like this or taking it the extra step and really really refining okay nice Ooh. okay i'm a supply and demand zone trader here i go all right price is likely all right thank you for signing up for my course here we go and we might even get a little point here all right, here you guys go. Good luck. I'm going to be trading one of these zones. 
and it's not going to help. And they're already looking for a chalky flippy in this little area here. This is not this is not the the game we play. We don't play the game of showing up to just trying to catch any given trade. We show up to either analyze the market and then decide what we're going to do next. In our case, on if you're a 15 minute base trader or higher, you're waiting for basically a redistribution model to occur that you want to then trade and and take lower or um, if you're even lower time frame, what you're doing is you're waiting for a model to be met that's worth trading. So in this case, we have a bullish market. It just shifted bearish, okay? And it's continuing shifting bearish. So right now, your prerogative should be to look to short this market. So if anything, right, this is distribution now occurring and it's happening early, right? Because the point of trading is to get in on early moves because that's where uh, moves are accumulated or distributed and then big moves happen. Well, now you can ask yourself, where is this all coming from? On one hand, you have basically um, this guy right here, where it's coming from, from this initial leg. And then in the, in, so that's from the enormous leg here. It's called institutional structure. It's what I teach in the private mentorship. And you have the current structure of the one minute, which is this leg right here. And within that leg, if for you, it's clarity that this is distribution, you are free to take like a position here or something right now. Again, this is not financial advice in any way, but these two are significantly better opportunities than trying to sit and wait for any little chalky flippy. So the best trade, if you actually were trading this, where it's actually setting up right now is to have a short setup right here and we can protect just over the high and we can protect um, a little bit more to account for some of the absorption that can happen of the zone. Just like that. This could be your first trade. You have this on and I'm happy to take a second risk on this. And this is some, this is one way to risk. And I'm going to protect a little bit higher because of the fact that here we also have a supply zone. Um, that's part of the overall range because this range is created by this high right here, actually. There we go. So I'm going to allow for it to come a, a little bit higher, about 4.5 pips. And now I would manage this accordingly to my strategy, right? Um, now for you might be the lows, whatever it might be, right? This is something that I'd be happy to take risk on. Why? Because it's meeting the contextual framework of everything. In this case, we actually came to a point where this market's actually worth trading. Now, if the market was and didn't have these breaks, do you think it's something that I would be considering the trade? No, not at all. I'd just get back, I'd set alerts, and I'd walk away because then I'd be waiting for that bearishness to provide itself because we've now conducted analysis from a top-down perspective and recognize where we, where we are, where we're coming from, what the likelihood move is. If we're following a higher time frame, we know what we're waiting for to continue that move. But because we know that moves do not need pullbacks and don't need to do that, we can continue going lower if we want to as lower time frame traders. And now we have a clear target defined so we know where we're working towards because we know what the overall context and framework of the market is. And as a result of that, when we have clarity or distribution that's occurring and showing us distribution, that's where we are happy to take on risk because now it's worth the potential reward. And what I'm going to do now is as you know, price is live right now. I'm not, I'm not taking this personally because it's not a super, super clean market for me. I like really clean uh, setups for myself personally. This, there's nothing wrong with the setup here. And if someone took it, then great. You know, this is an easy FTMO pass or easy man funding pass, by the way, check out manfunding.com. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pause this right now and I'm gonna come back after. Now, here's how I'm gonna manage this position, just to just to make sure that everything isn't like hindsight or whatever is whatever is stupid. If, if I was in this trade, here's how it's gonna be managed. What I'm gonna wait for, okay, is I'm gonna wait for price to break a low and create a new structural point. In the case that a structural point is created, and it's below the entry price, I will instantly take off 50% of the position instantly and hold the rest to where? Let me move this to the left. And hold the rest to this low right here or this low. It's up to you. Uh, again, management over time is gonna is gonna is gonna differ for you, but we'll go like this, okay? We're gonna look to take 50% off when it meets that rule of price breaking down and being below an entry price. Then we're going to, let's say, take another half off at this liquidity point right here, because that is that range that we exist in right now. That's that three hour range, right? I believe 15 minute range. Sorry. There it is. Yep. Um, yep. The 15 minute range is being created, right? Actually it's this low here. So there we go. Um, just based on absorption principles that is taught in the course, of course. Um, yep. 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 So there we go. So you're gonna, we're gonna look to either take 50% off when it meets that rule or 50% off the second it hits here, whichever one happens first, that's where we'll take 50% off at. And then the rest will be looked to ran here, right? So very simple guys, 50% will come off right here.
here or after structure breaks lower and creates a protected high under the entry price. So to show you guys what an example of that looks like, what I'll be waiting for um, is either you have a 50% partial setup right here, or if price comes down, breaks up, and then re-breaks down, the second it breaks here and there's a protected high that's under the entry price, I'll take 50% off instantly. Um, so that's how we're gonna think about this. And the rest is going to run to this low, very simple. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to, I guess like pause this and come back after and just show you guys what's going on. So you guys can learn from it, okay? Because we just did a, we conducted a top down. We decided where we are. We decided that it's worthwhile to take the risk because of the overall um, context of this market. And as a result, we can take that risk on because after you've done this time and time again, and you've gotten confidence behind analyzing markets, well, there's not much left to do. You just execute. And the, all these little issues of, you know, oh, but you know, oh, it hurts and it sucks that I'm, that I'm whatever the fuck it is. Um, oh, but I have these issues and those issues. It doesn't, none of that matters. They're useless. I mean, like, look at this because once you get to a point where you're experienced and are confident in what you're doing, well, there's, there's no excuse to be had because you know exactly what you're doing going forward. All right. All right. Cool. I'll be back shortly. So yeah, like for instance, right here, just so you guys see, even if this broke the low and closed, you can see the protected high is here, which is above the entry price, which means 50% will not come up. So unless there's a pullback that re-breaks down where there's a thing here that's under the entry price, that's where 50% will come off when it breaks and or this line. And that's it. And that's what we're waiting for. Okay. And while just before I pause this off, you know, on a normal uh, $2 million account with MentFX, with Ment Funding at basic, very low, um, let's call it not even 1% risk. We're going to call it half a percent of risk. Okay. You're risking about 10 K on this, which means that if you're reaching this first TP, um, so in this case, due to the fact that we're already moving on this, this is canceled as a, as a setup. This is the only setup that's now relevant. I was willing to take the loss on this if it came up into this area. So this is all good. Um, the first 50% is at, I'm sorry, guys. I hate that this is happening. I don't know why that keeps happening. Let me go back. Let me remove this down for you guys. Right on the, there we go. And 5.2 RR, right? So you're risking 10K per RR, right? And then at 5.2, you're taking off half and that times 10K, right? So with a little bit of work like this, and you can do this across any pairs of the day, you've secured $26,000 and potentially less than an hour, right? This, this is likely to be met in about an hour or less, right? So you one need to stop thinking about, um, you know, win rates and account sizes because, and focus more on the analysis and experience, because once your experience and confidence is there, the account size is going to grow no matter what. That's what trading is. That's how it works. That's how the people that get rich off trading get rich. It's through compounding. It's not through starting off with millions of dollars out the blue. Most traders were self-made. Um, all right, guys, I'll see you guys soon and we'll take a look at this. One sec. Okay, so I'm just coming back for a second here as I'm watching this. Um, what you can see now is that we've actually had the, the rule met for a pullback, right? And you can see that the pullback rule is under the entry price at the moment. So it hasn't broken the low yet. So that's what we're waiting for to take a partial. But what's happening now, right, is as we speak about, there's been a displacement above a previous high. Therefore, there was some kind of orders that came in in such heavy quantities that allowed it to displace above a previous high for that given period of time. So orders are coming in and that's where that new protected high would be. In the case that price now breaks down and closes under this low, I will instantly take a 50% partial at that close, the close of the candle, because now we have that rule met, which means that this is under that point and we can move this to not break even, but we're, what we're gonna do is we're going to take that partial and we're going to move our stop loss to 50% of this zone, as simple as that. Because theoretically it can absorb this still and it could even tap into the open of our, of our entry, but it shouldn't come back to the area we first counted as our stop to account for potential absorption. You can see that, you know, it was a great, it was a good accounting. I mean, in this case, it didn't even tap above the actual zone we selected, but nonetheless, 
just updating you guys, showing you the thought process as you're in a trade. So you understand that this is not like just some random stuff like, oh, we're gonna, we're just gonna feel it out. No, like we have, we have data points. Now, again, personally, for my own trading system, I actually, um, for my personal trading system, I have personal RRs that I set up and I have specific rules for actually exiting. But my normal setup is one to 10 is my first partial, one to 25 is my next, one to 50 and et cetera, right? That's for the, at least the FX side. My stock side, as a lot of you in the private mentorship know, is a lot different. Again, I teach a stock side methodology there. It's called bet on two. It's completely different to the, to the MentFX methodology taught right here in front of you, because as you know, in the private, I have time to work with the people there, the members there, a lot more information can be shared, um, a lot deeper information, and I can share my specific strategies behind the stock side and stuff. Because again, I'm not trading the FX side every single day. Sometimes I look at a market like EU as my as the, my main market because it's very liquid, and and there's nothing there to trade. There's no context. There's no good context, and there's no reason for me to be involved in it. And instead, I'll go and trade the stock side where you're looking at around six thousand markets. You can run a scan every given day, and you know of six hundred or so stocks that hit the scan two to three to five of them might be really good. And then of those, I'll take the best one. And then that will be my trade on the stock side. And usually on the stock side, I get a trade a day because of the fact that there's so many uh, markets available in the case there's a good setup. So if you're interested in that side and that methodology, you should also join up. That's all available with the community, right? The community gets you like what? I'm just talking to you guys now because we're just waiting for this to do its thing so I can show you guys the management, you know, because I showed you guys from this from the top down. We we worked our way through left to right, found out where we are in this market, what we're heading towards, what the likelihood of the market is, if we have space to continue in a given direction, um, what the models across time frames are, what the targets of those models are. And as we came down lower and decided that, okay, we're willing to trade the one minute. In the case that we have XYZ occur, which we did here, the distribution has started, the three boxes to the downside are occurring we are happy to take a trade and now you're seeing that play out so yeah if, if you guys are interested in the whole community aspect um definitely check out the website below um, i'm actually re revamping the website to make even more things available to members uh tools really cool analysis um there's going to be deeper analysis it's going to it's almost going to provide you directional analysis on any given time from using the MentFX methodology and the concepts taught uh here and in the private so join up. And if you want to learn more about the stock side, learn more about higher time frame, lower time frame, uh, learn more about entry criteria, specific entry criteria, learn more about MBs, double MBs. That's it's the home, right? We invented them. So it's a beautiful concept. Works for a lot of people. I use it personally. Um, changes the way you view the markets. Or check out my trust pilot. You know, I've I've seen some people leave some really cool stuff on there. But yeah, guys, you should join up. All right, I'm gonna pause this until this breaks the low. So again, the rule is still met. We had the displacement and the, the high now is still under the entry price. So as long as this line right here, this one breaks with a body, the second that body closes, that's where 50% of the trade instantly comes off. Oh, all right, we're just gonna wait for it then. <laughs> you can't make it up, dude. You cannot make it up. Let's have some coffee. So 50% will come off at the close of this candle or at this low here if it pushes there for some reason we have 20 seconds left on the candle again a lot of people are gonna get psychologically inept here start taking start taking insane trades or, oh it's making big moves no you wait for your rules to be met you make you made your rules you have a plan you wait for that plan to be met and then you execute it simple as that that is how you make money in the market this is never it's not it's not different for any profitable trader okay three two one and you can see there's no close so we're back to waiting nothing to take yet there's no closure that has to occur yet because now this is just an absorption price may play around some more maybe even it'll come back up to the entry and then break down which is why we have specific rules for management otherwise this could now start a huge distribution push that just pushes beyond this and could even close around here or into our zone here and that's how we make more than we would have made if we just uh, uh, did, did our psychology thing. And even if we did the uh, psychology thing and closed randomly here and secured some money and we were right in the future, that exact action is going to bite you in the ass. This is why it's so crazy and so hard for a lot of people to be traders because in a moment, they might make a good op they might make a good action that results in gaining a lot, but that same mindset that allowed them to make that action is going to come and blow their account in the future, right? I'm just watching this. So let's see if the closure would happen. Three, two, one, 50 percent off right there, right? That's it. 50 percent comes off right there at the close. I think it. Yep. So it actually gapped down, but we'll just call it at the at the candle. So that's 2.9 RR and you're closing 
2.9, you're closing half of that. So you just closed one point, you just secured 1.45 RR on this entire position on a $2 million account, right? Very simply, if one RR is the 10K, like we spoke about on a 2 million, right? Let's say you're risking half a percent or 1% even, right? 20K you're risking on the trade um, times the 1.45 that you just secured, you just made $29,000 on this trade, right? That's it, the, the $29,000 has been made. Now, it's not fully, fully realized yet. So this, it, this is actually realized, but now we're moving our stop loss, right? To the halfway mark of this SL. So if price now comes back to this point without coming down to basically our deeper targets, then what's going to happen is we're going to take a loss of negative 0.25 RR, right? So we'll be taking a loss of, if 20K is one RR, 0.025, we'll be taking a loss of $500, is that right? No. So we had 20K risk, we already took half a percent, we already taken half off, this would be the full risk and then we're taking another half off, so it'd be 5K. So if price returns here at the moment, price returns to be minus 5K, right? Total gain would be the 29,000 minus the 5K. So your total gain on this trade would be 24K minus commissions. So we'll just go crazy and call it 20K, but you don't even have to do that, right? 25K, 24K, 22K, whatever you want, okay? We're just not gonna consider commissions here just for the sake of you know simplicity. So it's 24K. And again, this is not exactly how I manage my own positions. I'm just showing you a version of management that I understand would work on a, on a more higher time frame, like a one minute or 15 minute or a one hour and a four hour, um, because on those higher time frames, more orders have more time to exist, which means that you have more likelihood of price actually reaching back up into a zone or your entry price. So 50% has come off there. Secure that 1.45. Um, now, because this is the liquidity point we're after, we can secure another 50% of the entire position here, right? So we were happy to take the 50% off instantly there or 50% off there. And the last 100% or more as you as you wish, however you wanna do this, 100% of remaining will come off here. Simple as that. And now I'm gonna let this play out. Now, what I'm gonna say very quickly is that in the case that once again, we get another uh, pullback that meets the conditions and then rebreaks lower, at that point, you know, given the fact that this has space to absorb, I will move this stop loss to break even. At the moment, I can still see it coming back up into here, literally, and then coming down short, right? That would be a redistribution model like we just spoke about across our analysis. So I'm gonna let this play out now. There we go. All right, I'm gonna pause it for now. I'll see you guys soon. Okay, what's up guys? Just jumping back on for one second. Um, as you can see, oh, actually the rule was not met here. Um, okay, so the rule's about to be met, right? This would be a candle closure above a previous candle's high, therefore displacement occurring, therefore orders coming in. So once again, if this low right now breaks now with a um, with a body, oh, oh my God, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill something. All right, so now if this low breaks with a body, this will come instantly to break even. Um, and of course, we'll be taking off another 50% right there. So just updating you guys on the on the thought process there, just showcasing, you know, how this is all done beforehand, how you can easily mark up trades and, um, and markets beforehand. So, you know, when it comes time to execute, you know how to do that. <laughs> Sorry, there's some stuff going on in the house. Um, but again, like I'm, I'm just showcasing to a number of you guys here just publicly. I mean, the private already knows that we do this every single week <laughs> with no issue. Um, but I'm just showcasing this to you guys so you can see that, you know, there's no there's no secret science or some secret shit that's going on. It's a it's a consideration of context. It's a consideration of where you are in a trend in a market. It's a consideration of just using simple steps like the three box and not keeping yourself clouded with a lot of the stuff that's available online with different names for different patterns, with different names for just break structures, with endless numbers of ways to just draw a bunch of zones in one spot that don't actually teach you how to look at the delivery of price and instead focusing on how can I simply use a simple simple step process, a three box system, SSC, to decide where I am on any given time frame, where it's likely to go, pinpoint targets of any given week, month, day, uh, year, whatever it is, and then execute in the case that something presents itself like it did here. 
that's what you're working towards. That's what experience in the market looks like. That's how you gain confidence. So we're just watching this again. I'm just going to do the math for you guys here. So in the case that it does come to this low, 50% will come off at another 5.2 RR. And very quickly, let's do the math on that. So a lot of you can see it. So 5.2 RR, uh, we'd be taking off half, but we already took off half. So we'd just be taking another half of that. And that will secure us another 1.3 RR if it reaches there, 1.3 RR, which equivalent to our assumption of 1% risk on a 2 million account where one RR is now 20K. That's what 1% is, right? That would be the 20K of one RR times the 1.3 would be a $26,000 gain, 26,000. So it looks like it just delivered. So at that point, we're actually moving our stop loss to break even now, just a little bit under if you want to account for spread, slippage, commission, all that fun stuff, just like that. So now if price returns, it is like plus a hundred bucks, but we don't need to write that. It's zero, it's BE. And the total gain would now be the 29,000 gain on this 1.45 RR here, plus the 26,000 gained on the partial that we just took. So currently floating, no matter what, not floating, like fully, fully realized that we have in our account that we've added, we've added on a $2 million account at one RR risk of 1%, assuming we've generated $55,000 of extra capital, right? So now the third partial in the case that it wants to go would be right down here. This is where hundred percent of the remaining will come off, right? And if it comes up, then this, so basically now it, it's it's all risk-free. If it comes up, we've made $55,000, otherwise known as uh, 2.75 RR, right? 2.75 RR or $55,000. And if it keeps going, then how much will that be? That's an RR of 12.8. Now let's do the math again. 12.8 over two, because we're taking off, because um, we've already taken off half, then another half that we've already taken off. So we'd be taking off the final 3.2 RR, which would be equal to, 3.2 RR, which is equivalent in reference to our assumption. So again, this is how you calculate risk and understand risk. 20K at one RR times 3.2, $64,000. An addition of $64,000 to the bottom line, which would put us up at around a hundred and, uh, what is that? 55,000 plus 55 plus 64, right? which would put us at around $119,000. So again, with a few minutes of work on any given day, and again, you do this across pairs and you wouldn't always have a trade and you'd take losses and break evens, of course, and you'd pay for those losses and break evens. But with basically under currently, at least under 30 minutes of price delivery on a very basic meant funding $2 million account, considering a 1% risk, which wouldn't necessarily be the risk you'd take. You'd probably take a lot lower. And I don't think the leverage would permit it. So, you know, you you'd just make this lower now, make it 0.5% or 0.25% or 0.2%, right? You'd be securing um, currently at least 55,000. If it continues, you'd be securing 119,000. So I'm gonna leave this here. I'm gonna come back one more time when this has delivered, whatever it has done, whether it comes to the low and secures the finale or comes up and breaks us even and secures us our 55,000. Let's see what happens. I'll see you guys shortly or maybe in a long time if it goes sideways for a long time. All right, see you guys. All right, hey, what's up? It's still the same day. And now the price is fully played out. It actually just came down and came right back up and came back to that break even like we spoke about. So this 100% remaining is gone. And this is something that's really important. Now notice how while being wrong, we were able to make a lot of money. This is something that's really important about trading that a lot of people forget. And I wrote this up here back way, way back when, when it started coming up to make you realize how this idea of the fractals in this market work and interact. When you're this lower time frame based trader, if you're someone that's trading on a very low time frame, right on one pair, of course, you're going to have more opportunities throughout the day because at any given point, a, a trade plan can be met for you during a session, right? During a specific minute, during a specific hour. Whereas if you're someone that's on a higher time frame, like we spoke about, like the 15 minute, well, you're waiting for a specific thing to occur now. You're, you're most likely waiting for a rebreak to the top side or a redistribution like we spoke about, right? So something I wrote here is that what you need to realize about this move now is that this move here, as it fails to go lower, can become the future 15 minute redistribution or a higher time frame zone leg, right? So as it starts going up here and playing around, if it fails to run this low, which we're now wrong about the low being ran, it now can take its time and make its way back up here and give someone that's trading a 15 minute or understands how to follow price the opportunity to now get involved and then go because 
something that's really important for you to remember is that you cannot predict when the market is going to make the run or keep making a run or when it's fully ready or when it's going to come back, which is why we have specific trade plans, right? That's why we have specific trade plans. And then we wait for the specific things that we have already tested to occur so that when the opportunity presents itself, then we can get involved without the added trouble of worrying about useless shit that beginner traders like to worry about like, my zones don't hold. I, I get no trades. I'm missing big moves. You know, I'm never in the, the big move. I'm always, I'm always getting stopped out. I have FOMO issues. I need a book to, to help my FOMO X, Y, Z and insert as, as you want to, right? This is where that comes from. So instead of that, recognize what you're waiting for and allow that to deliver. This has always been the idea that I've, been, that I've taught on my channel where if you have a break or a trend, expect that trend to continue. Usually when this trend breaks, it'll continue, continue, continue. Then it'll start to pull back and it'll continue, continue, continue. It won't make the pullback here. But based on the kind of time frame trader you are and the trade plan that you've evolved for yourself, that you understand your trading, in the cases that price does make this move, that is where you can get involved. But if you try to anticipate these moves and try to force longs at areas where clearly um, long should not be forced, you are going to lose your money. And that's how it works. So I hope you guys enjoyed this quick little video. You know, just a showcase of how you could get on any pair any day Look at it from a contextual framework. Keep these contextual frameworks in your mind because a contextual framework of this of this trade is not going to change now. It's 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 laid forward. It's still the same context. If I arrive another day now, like tomorrow during a session, and once again we I'm a one minute based trader or like a I'm I'm happy to enter trades potentially on the one minute or the five minute or something. Well, all I'm waiting for is a clear market that's either bullish shifting into bearishness and then distributing and or like we had today and or a market that's already bearish that reshifts bullish and reshifts bearish and then we follow that redistribution leg down just like we spoke about on the 15 minute which is what you would be expecting if you wanted to take it short right or now at this point because it broke that low uh, you could see it come up above here and then look to follow that down on the 30 minute you could look for that as it comes to shift above these highs and then resets that up and then you can look to follow that etc right because you have a specific location and time that you've analyzed that you've understood that you followed the price on and again it's replicating this exact same formula here of a bearish market that turns into bullish that redistributes slower because it's already precedent the precedent of the market is already short how so the daily is in a huge the weekly and daily is in a huge range then intermediary is breaking itself down and has tons of space to make the run and at the same time the weekly has only made one break to the top side that hasn't proven accumulation yet and if anything is still in heavy distribution right well in this case it kept going right it was like this so it's in heavy distribution yeah it made the break up but that doesn't matter because we're aware of the contextual elements of this market and for you that are in the private mentorship that, that are seeing this now this is the basic concept of absorption and how we think about absorption so you have two ways of thinking about absorption one is just wicks um on a given um on a given time frame for the ranges and another way to understand absorption is when you have a precedent or a bias set behind a market and then it comes to to trade higher you know that that is for the purpose of absorption or distribution rather than accumulation and that's likely why we approach this with that idea of looking for the continuation short and then as we scaled ourselves down to prove those shorts or to to basically cement um the idea of shorts on a lower time frame they all begin to add up and when they add up and the, the bias is there you can either you can do one of two things one is place an alert on the area you're willing to sell at or when it goes to absorb an area or comes into a zone that's one and then walk away or two get involved right now because it's setting up that exact trade you were looking for which is what you guys saw happen today um again today this is like the real date yep february 15th right i mean you guys can see on the right that it's live trading view price action i mean i don't have to prove this to you but we, you watched you watched us analyze this straight up we came down we understood we're bearish we have a bearish uh, leg we're working with we have a clear bearish leg that we wanted to see ran by this price that was part of a bigger structure leg that we were willing to see ran which still could be ran but over a longer period of time this is the importance of fractals that's where uh where's our nice little thing that's where wh wherever it went that's where that little um that little helpful tip comes from right where you recognize that due to the fractals, this trade, this sell specifically, didn't have to be the sell that ran this low of this range and the next um, S&D and then potentially even the lows down here. It doesn't have to be. 
uh, price can easily come back, give us that redistribution model a little bit higher, give us a new three box a little bit higher, start a bullish run, and then return into the bearish market a little bit later, right? It can easily go on another run right now, make a few highs, start creating dumb money areas within which they all want to get involved. We allow our redistribution model to come in handy, and then we follow the three box here, or we continue following this price action short as it then continues to deliver its higher time frame buys. This is the importance of, of basically merging the higher and the lower together rather than keeping them separated. And this is the importance of taking SSC or the three box and following it in uniform rather than taking a bunch of random concepts, kind of basically excusing yourself not to use one and use another at any given point. So, you know, you have this understanding, but you're not actually utilizing it. And a lot of people are in this boat um, and many of the mentorships and the communities and the educational resources that are available to them out there. There's a misfocus on following a step-by-step -step, uh, process to getting to a trade or a sound idea. And instead kind of this idea that like, oh, what's it doing right now? Oh, it's hitting this exact zone randomly, right? Like this is the idea of, okay, you know, we did, we did all this analysis on the weekly and now all of a sudden they're gonna go in and say, oh, but we're hitting this demand here and we might come up to this supply, which might come up to this supply and then there's equal highs right here. Um, and then there's equal highs here for a trend line and maybe like this, these equal highs here. So we're gonna expect the fucking back and forth schmoozle, right? But now we have random zones drawn everywhere. So one of them is definitely gonna get hit and for a marketing stunt, it's gonna look really good, but the people that are gonna be utilizing it are not gonna get anywhere with it. So instead, get rid of this, this, this clouded way of thinking where you have just a bunch of shit drawn and you're like, oh, that zone worked, but now I have no idea how to pick the actual zones that work. And instead focus on a simple blueprint for success, right? What's my hire? Where are the three boxes with my hire? What is the story from a left to right on that hire? And what's the expectation of the target as a result of that? Is the target an SND zone? Is it a liquidity point? Or is it basically the, the continuation through an SND zone, right? So that, that would be the idea here on the weekly where even though, um, you know, this is the target, this is only a target as that's gonna act as liquidity because I expect this then in this case to keep going short due to the current state of the market. Now, in the case that this comes, plays around and then takes out this high, it's going to change the bias. Of course, that's contextual elements. That's going to be proof of accumulation. But until then, there's no need to force that. So follow a blueprint rather than following random things. Mark out your three boxes or mark out your structural ranges. Allow those structural ranges to define the next most likely target and then scale down to move towards those targets rather than trying to basically, what is it? Sell a longing market or buying a shorting market. So I hope this helped you out. I hope this, you know, live example of me analyzing, getting to a point where there was a clear setup, showing you guys how you could take a setup, how you could then manage it. Now, again, my management is very different. If you want to know my specific strategy and strategies, like the one I use for the stock side, um, and you want to learn about more entry criteria, how to build out a proper trade plan, proper data collection, and all the fun stuff that comes with, um, you know, utilizing the stuff here, then you should join up with the private community, of course. Otherwise, you can see from a very simple, extremely simple um, trade management plan that we just showed here today, where we just took, you know, an area where price is showcasing that it's running on the next structure. So we're taking um, a partial off. Then it's running on the higher time frame bias that we had, which was this low. We're taking 50% off. And then the next one where we wanted to see it run that three hour low or that four hour low. Where did it make it to and is now coming up? And in the case that it's doing that, well, another day trader, aka you, on, the, on another day, as price starts coming up into these areas or starting to make bullish breaks on the 15 minute or one hour, can now begin to follow those lower time frames for that same redistribution model the exact same way. And when there is clear bias lining up across time frames, well, what should you do? You should take the risk because the reward is now worth it and you have confidence behind that execution. Now, again, none of this is financial advice. All of it is based on a simulated environment. You know, this is all basically simulated right here. Um, I mean, it's live price, but simulated. You saw me, you saw me put this on simulated. Okay. So can't zoom me now. <laughs> and yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much for being here and join up with the community. You won't regret it. There's tons of content there. There's hundreds of hours. You get access to me and a bunch of other really cool members. Um, you get to partake in Ment funding giveaways if you're part of the lifetime. Really cool stuff available. Check it out. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye.